<laughs> Number freaking five. All right. This project is getting tougher and tougher by the day. Oh man, this room. I swear, this room better be good once we're done. This wall turned out pretty nice. The green glue has already kind of settled. You can tell the vibration is, is definitely different from what you would expect from a wall. Looking forward, looking forward to getting done with this, man. Like this entire project has been just a long list of things to do. We kept adding to the project and yeah, but you know what? We got everything done that we needed to. Almost everything. It's gonna be spewing out cables. Managed to get right about that far. And I got stopped by a freaking I beam. But we're gonna get done with that too. It's time to spackle all of this stuff, to put some joint compound in there, to make it all nice and smooth. We're gonna finish all of this stuff up. This corner needs to be done. We're gonna finish up that poor little nook over there that's been waiting for an episode and a half. Also the dart stage needs to be spackled, taped. We're also gonna do the same with the restroom over here. The spackling is kind of difficult because I'm not super experienced at it, but I do have some experience. I hope it doesn't take me more than 16 coats to get it right. The taping I'm really kind of new at. I haven't done that before or maybe once. Still haven't decided on the color. Thank you guys so much for commenting on the previous episode. You never know, Beltran del Campo? Like we might go with the black. I'm not sure about the 3.0. Gray is also pretty good. But before, you know what? We're kind of far off from there. <laughs> I'm just looking at this wall, it needs to be done. So I'm gonna do that and then we're gonna talk paint. Hopefully we don't have any accidents. You guys ready for this? <laughs> Cause I'm not. <laughs> oh man, I hate spackling. So what are we waiting for? Let's just get into it. Let's do it. Not too bad for my first uh, return air vent. So it's important that you have drywall screws 16 inches apart. It's only glued together, it's not too bad. Beautiful, rustic studio, we're gonna keep it like that. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna start off with prepping the room a little bit first. I've done a nice once over of the floor, cleaned it all nice and, not very nice, but you know what I mean, and kind of cleaned it up a little bit. We're gonna put some of this plastic drop cloth over the entire length of the wall. Got a couple of these knives here that are nice and professional, I would say. Got a nice metal pan and because I'm me, I'm gonna go with <laughs> the 90. Uh, you know what? I learned from my mistakes. That's what this is all about. Got some mesh tape, got some paper tape, and I got a wall. So let's get this done and we can move on. Dude, should I like switch to acoustic or something? Is this becoming a thing? Alright, so here I actually realized that I didn't do the best of job below this sheet of drywall here. You remember those drywall screws supposed to be 16 inches apart? You need to have a wooden frame every 16 inches as well. And I actually did not do that until now. I also had an issue with a bit of a taper in that frame because, well, I haven't framed before so I think I installed it not square. So I had to compensate for that by cutting this uh, piece of wood in an angle. So that was tricky. You see the taper starts at around half inch. And that ends up at zero, right over here. Cut the same on the top and in the middle as well. Okay, so we're in great shape. Gonna get some rest and get a bite to eat. And I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna finish the little nook over there. And then once we're done with that, I still have to kind of fix up the back wall of it because we busted it open to mess with the electrical last time. And once I'm done with that, I'm gonna finish up this back wall. Pretty good shape so far. So we have all of these walls kind of pre-filled, sort of like just the first pass of spackle. We're gonna start 
getting serious about this. This is actually the first time that it's gonna be one big smooth surface. We're gonna sand this down. I actually got a new tool for that. I sure hope it beats uh, just hand sanding all of this. It will be, it will be a major pain. That's gonna hopefully make my life a little bit easier. So let's open it up. Oh, it comes with a nice storing bag. That's nice. Okay, so it comes with its own like dust collecting system and this is a part of it. Usually whenever you're sanding these walls by hand, you're covered in dust. This is what it looks like. It looks pretty solid as far as the build goes. It feels kind of heavy. It's got these LED strips, so it's gonna light your way around. It supposedly has several speeds from what I read. And this is the hose that collects all the dust and it routes it up all the way here. Straight into that bag, hopefully, we'll see. Yeah, you know, let's assemble this and uh, see, see what we can do with it. We're gonna sand all this stuff, get some tape on there, get some more mud, sand it again, get some more mud, sand it again, get some more mud, sand it again. <laughs> So it's been a couple of days and everything had a good chance to dry and kind of set. And it's looking pretty good. I'm happy with where we're at. I did mess up a couple of spots like here. Hear that sound? There's a little air bubble. And I think I saw one more maybe over here. Yeah, right here. Turns out if you're taping with uh, paper tape, it's super important to have like extra runny like mud so the paper can pick it up. That's the one downside when you're using the paper tape. You run the risk of getting these air bubbles. And the thing is you have to fix them otherwise you're gonna probably end up getting a crack there and you fix them with this, right? So you kind of cut it out. Let me see if I can do this left-handed. Peel it off. They say it's important to kind of cut, cut a little bit more than you think you should. So you reach the edge of the paper that kind of the glue together well. So that's where the bubble was. So now when that's exposed, you just put some spackle over that and call it good. The good thing is that I didn't use the paper tape all the way through. Depending on the hole, I was using kind of like a mix of, of the paper tape and this kind of mesh fiber, I think it's like fiberglass thing, whatever. I use that here, right? So, and all those places that were like extra messy. So that's all good. You just sand it and spackle it over again. But I guess paper is better to use for something. I'm not even sure, to be honest. that I have very limited experience with this. It didn't turn out so bad. We're officially done with taping. I did kind of have to um, redo a bunch of them. I want to say like almost like 30% that I had to redo that bit. That entire nook, couple of spots here, there, you see where it's kind of still moist. That portion, that portion, that portion, that portion, that little portion down there. So here, here, oh yeah. And also here. Anyway, you live and learn, live and learn, right? So now it's time to make the entire wall like nice and flat. So there's like all these curves from these butt joints that we gotta kind of hide, right? It's never gonna be like perfectly flat, but you're supposed to do it so you don't feel or any major waves. Is that a long day or what? That's not bad at all. 
that California patch right there, I'm not crazy about it. It was my first one, so it's a little tall. I either have to put a bunch more mud on there or sand it down. We'll see if it wants to cooperate or not, but this is the other section. So this looks like, so that's this part of the wall. I'm not gonna tape this because we're gonna have trim on top of that. You can see how this section looks like here. Still a little wavy, so it might need like another pass. And here you can see my mud was getting kind of dry towards the end, but this is gonna sand right off. Not gonna worry about that too much. Ooh, that's just nasty. Definitely, um, definitely learning a thing or two about all this stuff. I'm gonna get some rest, and tomorrow we're switching to this bad boy. I got a couple of packages. Hopefully that does it. So apparently that's like a different kind of mud. No idea what the experience is gonna be, but we'll see. I think it's a little softer, like a little easier to work with, but it's also a little, uh, like it's easier to break once it dries. So far, so good, so far, so good. See you in the morning. See all these chunks? If I left that in there, it would have started writing on the wall. Because when you apply the mud, you want it to be nice and smooth, right? So because these are hard, they don't exactly blend really well. Gee, I wonder who didn't wash this. Some douchebags must have forgotten to wash this really well last time. Jeez, freaking lazy people. Leaving things as they are, they just leave. Let's go for lunch. I'm gonna talk to my manager. Let's go. Go apply some mood. So you see this paper here? That's a no-no. That means they didn't apply enough mud. There's apparently five different levels of uh, drywall finishes. So once I apply that one more coat to cover this papery stuff up and to kind of even it out a little bit more so it's nice and flat. That's gonna be your level four. Then, because of course we always go to the max, we're gonna go to level five. Level five is when you coat the entire thing, you skim coat the entire wall, so there's none of these surfaces like this, right? So it's all white. Because sometimes under certain light conditions, like these things would show even through your paint. We're gonna be lighting this with all kinds of different lights. So we're gonna avoid that by going to level five and skimming, skim coating the entire thing. So, but before that, let's, uh, let's get some mud going. So after a little bit of trial and error, this uh, way of watering your mud works a little bit better, especially for these smaller quantities. Soak it all in water, let it absorb as much water as possible, and stir, and it's much easier to dose actually how much water you want, because you're adding little by little, right? You're not dunking a bunch at once. It's starting to look like proper mud. 
That's about right. I'm still mixing, but it's good enough to start working with it. So you see, this is the paper. So that's what we got to cover up. Crazy how much you want to do this thing. My ladder, except I don't have enough for this. It's getting pretty dry, so you see it's already setting up. And this is the 90. It's all about spreading this out. So we gotta do the same thing on the other side, try and get enough mud to about here, same thing in that corner, and just rinse and repeat. Not bad. It's, uh, it's, it's, almost, it's almost there. We're not necessarily level four just yet. There is some, especially here in the beginning, I'm not sure if that comes across on camera, but there's these like imperfections like here that are just for my crappy, crappy mud work. But over here, as I, as I progressed, I had gotten better. It's tough to get these like wider strokes like really nice and even but for the most part i would say it's it's pretty good like 85 percent there to level four although i don't think it's going to take me an extra coat because the skin coat is going to cover all of that stuff anyway so i think we should be able to kind of skip level four and go straight to level five but yeah man is there a lot of dust in here check this out I'm not sure if that comes across on camera but that's so dusty it's gotten a little better since i opened the door but yeah there we go. I'm gonna say though, this is definitely one of the harder things that I've done. No joke. It's just a little early, so I'm taking off like some wet material. Yeah, I guess I wasn't patient enough. Oh well, let's go uh, take a little break and then uh, keep going. <sighs> All right, so, so it's time for the skim cup. We're gonna use a different kind of mud right now. It's a lighter, sort of easier to work with kind of mud, I guess softer maybe, and it dries way, way slower. So that's gonna be awesome. I have a bunch of these like little holes and stuff because I couldn't work with the mud fast enough. So there were like a bunch of these pockets and stuff like that and the wall is kind of full of those. How do you open this thing? Some serious packaging. I think this is how you do it. Pancake batters. See how, wow. It's quite a bit. Now, to water it a little bit. Mix it. 
no, it's kind of fine. It's nice and soft. This is definitely, I can already tell just from like mixing it like this, it's definitely a much, uh, a much different compound from what I used so far. Uh, the 90, this is definitely much, it's a, it's a different material. We're also gonna use a slightly different approach. We're gonna apply the mud with one of these. I'm gonna roll it on. I think it's gonna be a bit quicker and probably a little bit more uniform because I'm not great at this at all. So we got a nice big roller. It's nice and kind of fluffy. It's gonna grab onto a lot of mud, I think. So yeah, let's try, see how it goes. this thing out of this like weird like whatever this is you can open it up and you can invert the bag see what I mean so you kind of expose the majority of it flip it over kind of like that it's all gonna get it like that seems like the better tactic anyway definitely got more out of it than previously but honestly <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Water it down a bit. Woo! Oh boy. Okay, it's the day after, so everything had a chance to dry overnight. And it's not too bad. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, but towards the beginning here where where I kind of didn't really know what I was doing just yet. You have stuff like this, right? It's gonna have to be fixed. I don't think uh, I don't think I'll be able to sand that, but never mind. I'll just do one more pass to kind of fill all that stuff up. As I was progressing, everything kind of got a little better. But like here, these. I think if you have these, these are whatever washboard effect. I think they call them. Those are kind of okay. Those will, will sand. These are definitely okay. Lift offs. Getting into the terminology here. These things I'm not super proud of. Towards here, it's getting better and better. Towards this wall over here, it actually started being relatively good. A little bit of that washboard effect. This one kind of turned out pretty good. This will all just sand off. And the rest of it is kind of nice. I think this one probably turned out the nicest. Over here, it's also pretty good. Up there, kind of almost like proud of that up there. Let's see how it turned out downstairs. Yeah, I still have to do this bit, but we'll get to that. Not surprisingly, this part was kind of difficult. Do you remember how that looked? I think with a little bit of sanding and another pass, perhaps it's gonna be just great. A couple of these hitchhikers, <laughs> they, got, they got in there, but it's kind of not bad, really. A little bit of that washboard effect. A little bit of this. These are the lift-offs that I was talking about. Those sand right off. You see, that's gonna have to be done. I honestly, I just didn't even know what to do there, so I kind of used my best judgment. But yeah, we're gonna fix that up in, a, in another pass, and let's see in here. Ooh, that's good. That California patch did its thing. <laughs> I have to do this bit over here. That's gonna be really annoying. I'm pretty sure this one turned out the nicest. It's just like nice and even lift-offs. Some bubbles. But honestly, I'm pretty happy with how it looks so far. It's almost there. We're at the last like 5%. It's gonna do the corners, gonna touch up the couple of spots, the couple of spots that I need to. And yeah, we'll be we'll be done before you know it. Okay, wow. Metamobs makes us, 
That about makes us officially done with all this drywall nonsense. Solid eight out of 10, I would say. This light here is super helpful for all this stuff. You can see everything, all the little imperfections. Remember all those ridges that were here? Like this is like amazing how it all just cleans up. It's a lot of sanding, my friends. <laughs> it's good though. The nook is awesome. Still need to take this off. This is an interesting thing. Let me show you. Isn't that nice? Nice plastic ridge. It's called a tearaway corner bead, or they also call it an L molding. It's like you glue this part, or rather this part on the wall. This goes on the other end of the corner, and then you tear away this bit right here. And you get a nice corner edge. Is that better? All right, now that the walls are ready to be painted, gotta clean everything up before we proceed. There's a whole lot of dust. I just moved all that protection. You can literally see the line. I mean, look at this, it's absolutely gross. And unfortunately, I couldn't tape it off well enough. So we have plenty of this like super fine, super fine dust. This is like powdered sugar almost. It gets airborne super quickly. And I actually found a really cool thing. So this is what they call a sweeping compound. So you dump all of this on and then when you sweep, it kind of soaks all the dust so it doesn't get airborne as easily. A little bit more here. It actually smells really nice. It's almost like sawdust, but there's something more to it. I guess there are some different chemicals in there. It's soaked and stuff. It's a little wet. And then you get a broom. Sweeps it all nice. Otherwise, this will start leaving like traces of everything. It's actually really effective. You see what I mean? How the floor stays like really clean afterwards? I don't know, it's a pretty interesting find. I've never heard of like a sweeping compound stuff. So I was like, all right, let's try this out. And it kind of works. Okay, it's the day after. Everything is looking great. We're just gonna get a little bit more of that drywall compound. And we're also gonna go buy a shop vac. I ordered it all for curbside pickup. So just get out of the house a little bit. I think it's gonna be a nice change. I'm spending way too much time in the house, man. It's cold as fuck. Look at that. Average day in Canada. Ooh. Okay, we're safe. <laughs> nice that this car has seed warmers. Alright, let's go. Let's go get her and let's finish this one off. Uh, hi, yes, I ordered uh, for curbside pickup. Sounds good, thank you very much. Okay. All right, mission accomplished. Come here, let's go back and let's get it done. Vacuum is not messing around, man. I don't think I was ever as excited about a freaking vacuum. But yeah, it's pretty good. Let's get to work. Okay, that was a lot of work, guys. I mean, it's a pretty good improvement, I'm gonna say. Now, you might have noticed that I switched to hand sanding at some point towards the last coat, so that's because I actually don't like 
the drywall sander, the electric one. It's not great. Uh, it's way too heavy. It's noisy as hell. There's no control. You just kind of put it against the wall and hope for the best. And it kind of blows all the dust up in the air. It doesn't collect all that much. So not sure that I would recommend necessarily. Now, if there's one thing that I wish I did sooner in the process is protect the floor like this. As I was cleaning everything up, I realized, man, if I have to do this like after we paint, because I have to do the ceiling and everything, the walls, the whole shebang, right? Um, it's not, yeah, it's gonna be way too much unnecessary work. So I bought this dry sheathing or whatever. It's kind of like a thick cardboard that you just kind of roll across the floor, tape it down, and it protects your floor really well, actually. I kind of like it too, it might leave it on. <laughs> now the next episode is gonna be all about like finished carpentry, the trim and everything, and the paint. Now I know I said this before, but it's a pretty long video as it is, so we're just gonna cut it here. But that being said, that leaves us with another opportunity to kind of brainstorm the color scheme a little bit more. I'm thinking black, and then gray, and then gray. I really want to hear from you guys, what do you think we should go with here? Now speaking of paint, the roller method for this last coat is absolutely great. Highly, highly recommend it. If you're doing this yourself, which you absolutely should, it's definitely, you know, it's definitely a chore, but you know, if you take a little bit of time and just, you know, research a little bit, try it out, you know, you can absolutely get, I mean, these are, as far as I'm concerned, these are professional results, especially once we put some paint on there, it's gonna be just, <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for watching. You have no idea how much it means to me, you know, you being here and sharing this experience with me. I just can't wait to get done with this room and like start working in it. It's got, I, I think it's gonna be awesome. If you by any chance have done this yourself in the past, you definitely know what I'm talking about. Throw a comment down there if you're enjoying these. Hit the like button, subscribe, don't forget about that. Let's get to that 10,000 by the end of the year. And yeah, I'll uh, see you guys in the next one. It's gonna be a doozy, man, for sure. Ciao.